The Pennsylvania Game Commission began the Barn Owl Conservation Initiative several years ago because survey results showed that the barn owl had decreased by about half in population size over the last 20 years. We know that barn owls have declined in Pennsylvania over the last 20 years due to surveys that were conducted. We believe this decline is in association with their habitat. They're strongly associated with grassland habitats. They, they forage on uh, meadow voles primarily that are found in haylands and, and pastures and, and grasslands. So as we lose that habitat, the barn owl population is also declining. So we're trying to do everything we can to uh, stabilize the population that still has good, good habitat. We rely heavily on reports from the public uh, to let us know where the barn owls are. A great way is getting calls uh, into our regional offices or emails into our Harrisburg office that say, I think I have a barn owl, and we'll follow those up check and see if there's uh, a high likelihood that, that the, the area is getting use and we try to locate the box in an appropriate place for them to nest. We place our boxes predominantly in farms where we, we know of barn owl activity or if a landowner or a farmer has an interest in promoting barn owls on their property. We recently had a, a scenario where uh, a barn owl nest uh, you know, occurred on top of silage. So we tried an experiment where we actually removed the eggs and put those eggs into a foster nest and we wanted to see if this was a viable way to conserve barn owls and move nests. Already put some dots on here so we'll see if this experiment works. I'll come back and check the nest and we'll see if these eggs that we introduced to this nest remain viable and, and hatch out. The barn owl nest that we're going to put some of these eggs into is located up on the top of this silo. It's about 50 feet above the ground. I'll uh, have a rope that I can pull up a, a bag that has the, the eggs in and I'll simply just reach in and put the eggs with the other young in the nest. About half of the eggs in this nest have already hatched out and there are a few eggs so um, this is pretty good timing to introduce some new eggs into this nest. Our primary interest in locating owls is to document where they're nesting and get a rough count of how many owlets they're going to fledge. As a secondary step, we also put bands on the baby owls, and that helps us answer pretty important research questions that help us conserve the owls better. Primarily, it lets us know things like where the young go after they fledge and, and leave. We band the barn owls with a small aluminum leg band Basically, banding allows us to find out some important information about the life history of a, of a bird. If that band is recovered, if, if someone finds that owl uh, dead, or if we find it nesting somewhere else and we're able to read that band, uh, we can find out where that owl uh, fledged out. And that gives us a good idea of how far these, these birds are moving from where they were born, and also how long they live. No. Still got a little bit of time. And I'll put him in his tube so he feels nice and secure while we put the band on. I always band on the right leg. Watch for that other foot. We've been putting bands on our barn owls for the last several years, since 2005. It's a species that's in a pretty good decline right now, um, and we're, we're trying to get a better estimate of, of how owls disperse across the landscape and see if we get any of these bands recovered in other states or, or in areas that, uh, that we already have other owls and just getting an idea of how much they, they move around. We've already had some bands returned from places like Ohio and Virginia. So these owls do move quite a bit uh, after leaving their nest. The most important thing is securing nest sites for these owls. So in this barn, the uh, landowner actually constructed a, a nest box and put it up on their own and, and for several years it wasn't being used and, and just in the last two years they started getting owls and, and they've had successful clutches for the last two years. Um, and that's really one of the most important things we can do for, for the owls in, in conservation is protecting their nest sites. And we can come back and check them 
every year and, and see how they're doing and make sure that they're, they're having successful nests. Since we were adding a fairly significant burden to these other nests by introducing these additional eggs, because our benchmark for success was that the, uh, the natural eggs would hatch and successfully fledge along with the introduced eggs. Unfortunately, that didn't happen in, in every nest. Probably not a procedure that we would repeat again, uh, but, but an interesting experiment. The boxes are used quite readily by the owl. They really do uh, adopt them well. They're natural cavity nesters, so hollowed out trees and, and things like that. But these boxes provide them a lot of security from predators, particularly other owls like great horned owls and other predators like cats and raccoons that might be found in the farmland habitats that they occupy. And, and the, bar, the, the, the boxes really do provide them with a lot of security to protect their young, and they've, they've worked really well. Pull her out, and then put her out on the table if you want to spread her wings out. Hi, buddy. This is about the oldest one we have in this box. We measure the, the length of their seventh primary because it's a really good indicator of age. So we know about about what age they they are when we band them. This one's about seven weeks. Put her in the bag to get a weight. We'll take a weight just to make sure that that's healthy within normal boundaries. They'll actually weigh quite a, bit, quite a bit more when they're young like this. This is 610. Lighter than the last one. And they'll, they'll weigh quite a bit more and then right as they fledge they'll be about their heaviest and they actually lose weight as they're adults but they get quite chunky off their parents and that gives them a good jump into the world before they really become capable of hunting on their own. We'll take a, a breast feather sample and that feather sample will have a, a bit of the follicle which has a little bit of DNA in it and there's a, a professor in York College that's cooperating with our, our Sparnow project and he's going to look at the DNA to, to see uh, particularly maternal relatedness among these owls so um, get a picture, a better picture of, of how big our, our owl population is by genetic diversity and see how much these owls are, are breeding with other populations throughout the state. This owl hatched out of its egg about seven weeks ago and it has about another week, week and a half before it's ready to, to fledge and, and start flying on its own. This particular nest had Four, four babies in it, um, and that's fairly typical. That's about average, but they can have um, as many as seven or eight. So they're pretty prolific breeders. Hi, sweetheart. They use these very sharp talons, curved talons, to, to capture primarily small rodents. About 95% of their diet consists of small rodents that they they forage in uh, fallow fields and riparian areas and, and hay fields. So that's the habitat that they require because that's where they get most of their food from. Typically we only see one, one clutch per year, but they can, they, they are capable of two. And we'll put this owl right back into its box and, and let it continue to develop and, and fledge on its own.